Before I got into sync licensing, I wish someone would have told me these three things. And you wanna make sure you stick around to the end because this last one would have saved me a lot of money. The first thing I wish I knew was about song length. Now, when I started making music, songs were about three and a half minutes to four minutes long. So naturally, I made my beats the same way, but I wasn't getting traction until one of my friends who was doing sync licensing told me, hey, just make the song less than two minutes. Ideally, one and a half um, minutes to two minutes. Then I noticed start things changing and the more briefs I got, they mostly said, keep your track under two minutes or at the minimum, a minute and 30 seconds. So it all clicked. It made sense that these songs don't need to be long. If the editors need to cut, they'll make different cuts. That's why you have to format your music in a different way. And that brings me to the second thing that I wish I knew. Making beats for artists and making music for television and sync are two totally different things. Don't get me wrong, you do hear popular songs on television, right? But they're popular. But most of the production music is not popular music. So you wanna make it different. It's not just having a beat and making a loop. And that's what most of the time you hear with popular artists because you wanna hear the artists. So the loop, it just gets contagious in your head over and over the same thing. But with sync licensing, you wanna make sure you have variety in your track. So there is actually a different structure that you need to make your music. So that way, when you're making it to a minute and a half to two minutes, it's actually changing throughout, giving some rhythm, giving some forward motion to the track because you wanna to try to move the scene along. And that's what mainly your music is supposed to do especially on television and any other medium really, is to help move the scene along. And the very last thing I wish I knew before I started sync licensing was that you don't have to pay to get your tracks heard or placed. Now I'm gonna put a caveat on that because there's some libraries where you do pay and people have had success. But let me tell you a little story about me. So when I first started, you know, I'm looking for production libraries and it wasn't a lot at the time when I first started. And it was this nice one. It was a black owned company. I was like, OK, that's pretty cool. Right. Because you'd be surprised how many even though black people make a lot of music, it's influenced by hip hop, a lot of things like that. We don't own a lot of things. So I thought, OK, let me get this a try. And they were accepting music for twenty five dollars a track. Now, that does sound a lot, but I was working right full time. So what I would do every week, I would just pay $25. So one track, $100 a month. It didn't break the bank. Like I said, I worked overtime too with my job. So I was funding myself. And that's one important thing that you can do for yourself. If you're into just making beats or you want to be in the sync licensing, you don't have to start in full time because I didn't. I had a full-time job. I made music after I got the job, I mean, after I stopped working, right? So that was my strategy. I would just save up the money, submit one beat a week. But I noticed that I wasn't really getting any traction, right? And I was submitting only one song to these various different things. And at the end of it, I only got one song into a library. And to this day, I still haven't got a placement with that song. Now, that's not unusual if you're in a music library. You can be in a music library for free and still not have any placements for years because that's how what happened to me when I got into free music libraries. I didn't get placements to about two years after. But I'm not saying that you can't try paid libraries because like a lot of other things in the world, having access means you have to give up something right like you might be in the right place right time your music might sit just right for the scene and whatever you pay let's say you pay fifty dollars you can end up with a thousand dollar check and then you can say it paid off but i know for me i just kept doing it kept doing it for years and it didn't pay it off until again my friend that already did sync license said look 
do it this way, approach music libraries this way, because they'll just take your music, they'll either reject it or take it, but you don't pay anything, right? See, they make out, most of them make out deals where they take back end royalty. So the publisher, which would be the music library, takes 50% of your publishing. You as the writer, composer, even though you make beats, you are a writer and composer, you take the other 50% of the publishing. So you might be giving away your music in a sense for free, but you get stuff on the back end. To me, that's a better deal than paying your money, paying your money and not seeing something. You get frustrated, then you're going to say, I quit. And also submitting one at a time, it just decreases your odds that something get placed. That's why now I make theme albums. I usually do a minimum of 10 songs per album. So think, if I was submitting 10 songs at one time, that's a lot of money up front. But if you want that bonus tip to help you with sync licensing and why I make music albums, check out this video.